Ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking a lot today about uh, how we need to uh, integrate digital into the classroom. Uh, well, let's hear from someone now who's done exactly that. Uh, Carrie Ann Philbin, no relation to Maggie, let me make that clear for a second time today, um, has brought digital to life in the classroom, both as an ICT teacher and now at Raspberry Pi. So a huge round of applause for Carrie Ann Philbin. Thank you. Um, I don't know about you, but my head hurts a little bit. Those last two presentations, there was a lot of data there, a lot of percentages being thrown at me. Um, and so I'm just going to try and take it down a little bit, perhaps to my level, maybe. Um, so I'm no relation to Maggie Philbin, uh, no direct relation that we know of, um, but she was hugely um, inspirational to me as a young person. And I've been a teacher for a number of years in one of the poorest boroughs in England um, before joining uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about what I did in my own practice, what led me to working for the foundation and what I'm now doing uh, for them. So just to give a bit of context, really, um, as an ICT teacher, and probably like you guys who are teachers out there, you will know this, we get a really, really bad press, right? ICT teachers are rubbish. You know, your lessons are boring. Um, and I don't think that's true. I'm very proud to stand up here and say that I am an educator and that I was an ICT teacher. You know, I still consider myself to be a teacher. And I'm also a huge advocate for women in technology. And the reason, and I'll just give you one story that actually comes from today to try to explain to you why I'm a, an advocate for women in technology. Um, I've been sat at this table down here with some of the speakers, and um, that table is full of men, and we've heard from people like Airbus and Acorn. And this morning, the young people in the room were really encouraged to, to speak to people in industry, to perhaps um, find a connection there, maybe learn how they could um, get on a job. I can speak from the lectern, yes. Um, and so a young person came over to our table, um, a 17-year-old boy, and um, the, the chaps to my right were, were talking, they were in a conversation. So I encouraged the young man to come over, and I said, you know, can we help you? And he said, oh yes, I, I've come over here to speak to these two gentlemen about how I can get into the technology industry. And that's just, just indicative, really, of the casual sexism that is part of this industry. What's, why wouldn't he talk to me? Yes, I, I know I'm an educator, but I work for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. You know, I see Evan Upton on, on a daily occurrence, the trustees and the co-founders. You know, I speak to them all the time. They include David Brayburn, who um, created the first computer game Elite for the BBC Micro. You know, I know people. That's true. Um, so why, why were those young people not encouraged to talk to me? And why did the men and the gentlemen on my table not turn and say, oh, what do you think? But they didn't. And so I would encourage that the young people here today that um, actually, if they are sp want to go to speak to people on tables or to the people stood outside uh, manning the booths, that actually, if there's a woman there, don't assume that she is the personal assistant or the secretary. Actually, she might be able to help you too. And this, this really is uh, what I'm talking about. So something I used to do as a teacher quite often was, I, you know, every teacher knows, right? Post-it notes best invention ever for teaching, that on whiteboards. Um, so I used to give post-it notes to my students all the time, and one of the questions I, I would ask them, and, and this group of post-it notes actually came from a group of girls I asked, who were about 13. Um, what do you think it is like to be a computer scientist? What do you imagine computer scientists to be like? And I think these post-it notes really tell a story. Some of them say things like, well, you must be on your own. Probably someone who's on their own a lot, doesn't have any friends, um, who are really into science and mechanics, and you have to be really good at maths. One of those post-it notes says, um, you have to be a bit like Einstein. Uh, but there are some good post-it notes there, as well as one that talks about money, and it's true. If you work in the IT industry, um, you can earn a lot of money. And I really like the one right at the bottom that says 57 cats. I'm not really sure if this is because they think there's a lot of cat videos on YouTube or if they think, you know, you're like that crazy cat woman who's going to have 57 cats. And I'm not sure why it's specifically 57, but they seem keen to, that if you are a computer scientist, you own 57 cats. So what I did as a, a, as a teacher and as an advocate for women in tech is, um, the first thing I did is I put my classroom in the cloud in 2012 when I became a Google certified teacher. And I started to make videos. And really around that time and through my teacher training, I was always told, do not have an online presence, right? Don't let kids be able to find your Facebook or your Twitter. Well, it's rubbish. 
actually. It's about curating what um, young people find about you on the internet. That's really important. If you Google my name, it is a bit of a rare name. Um, so the first seven pages of Google are all about me, but they're all positive things. And so one thing I did is I set up a YouTube channel. It's called The Geek Girl Diaries. I make YouTube videos for young people, um, specifically for teenage girls to try and encourage them into STEM. Uh, but I do have a lot of followers who are both male and female. I get a lot of emails from teenage boys as well as teenage girls um, who are interested in the, in the videos that I produce. Um, you can see one there in the middle. Yes, that is me in a whoopee cushion outfit. I will not deny that. That was the, probably the fifth video I ever, I ever made. And when I uh, put it online, uh, one of my teacher friends said, really, you're going to upload a video of you in a, in a whoopee cushion outfit? What if your students find it? I said, good, I hope my students find it. I will do anything to get them to, to really embrace every opportunity and, and perhaps learn something new and maybe some, learn some skills. And yeah, if they laugh at me, they laugh at me. I don't care, at least I tried. Um, that, the YouTube channel also includes videos with women in technology. I think it's really important that um, young people don't always have access to role models. Role models are really important if we want to engage girls in, in the subject. And I had a wonderful um, lunchtime conversation with um, some women uh, in Wales who are uh, running a group where they, um, they're trying to upskill uh, young women in this sector. So what else did I do? Well, I wrote a book for young people. I noticed when Raspberry Pi came out that there was a lot of really technical books. And a lot of people were saying, well, actually, there's a huge barrier there to young people getting started with Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I created something that was just for them. And actually, it's been picked up by lots of people. Lots of teachers are picking it up and using it to teach the new computing curriculum in England, um, which for me is very exciting. And I've also got some new fans that are dogs. And what else I did was I started to um, approach the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I said that uh, you know, I want to teach um, young people something a little bit more interesting than the current curriculum. Um, can you help me? And they sent me a guy called Dr. Sam Aaron from Cambridge. And here's a live coder of music. And this is where creativity can have a, a huge effect on what you do. And uh, he makes music with, um, with code. And we turned the Raspberry Pi into a synthesizer. So my students would um, code music so a text-based programming language, it's actually based on Ruby, and it's proved to be a really good bridge between visual programming language, like Scratch, and then something maybe that's a bit more difficult, like Python. It uses some of the same syntax, which is really cool. So my students all thought they were just making really great electronic music tracks. But actually, by stealth, we were teaching them um, computer science concepts, which, are, uh, which just continue all the time. What you learn in Scratch can be used in Ruby, can be used in uh, Python. So I've talked a lot about um, Raspberry Pi. Um, this is my Raspberry Pi. It's probably the most well-traveled Raspberry Pi on the planet. Uh, mine just happens to be in a, a funky looking case. But some of you might be wondering, well, actually, what is a Raspberry Pi? And I know from my conversation at lunchtime, um, they were quite shocked to find out how much uh, they cost. Um, so here's a little video that will hopefully help explain. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a credit card sized computer that costs around £25 designed to teach young people to program and is capable of doing all kinds of wonderful things. Back in the 80s, kids had to learn how to code computers to use them and as a result, these kids grew up with an inbuilt understanding of how computers work. Now, we need more programmers than ever before. So to deal with this problem, some clever people came up with the Raspberry Pi to reignite the spark. It runs Linux, a free operating system from an SD card, just like the one in your digital camera, and it's powered by a USB phone charger. You just plug in a mouse and a keyboard, connect it to a TV or monitor, and you're ready to go. In schools, not only is Raspberry Pi a great way to learn programming skills as part of ICT, there are also dozens of cross-curricular applications, like science, yeah! and music. And all over the world, people are experimenting with Raspberry Pis and attending Raspberry Jam events, where people of all ages are learning what can be done with a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Since the first Raspberry Pi was shipped, we've seen examples of people using the Pi in a variety of amazing and interesting projects. Taking advantage of its size, portability, cost, programmability, and connectability. So whether you want to learn to make games, build robots, or even teach a bear to parachute, with Raspberry Pi, the sky's the limit! 
So it is a credit card sized computer. Um, they cost under £30 each. And uh, at the foundation, uh, we're a charity and we really believe in um, computing should be available for all. Computer science is for all. Engineering is for all. Uh, and that, that's what underpins what we do. It runs Linux. Uh, so Linux is an open source um, operating system. Uh, this sometimes mildly terrifies network technicians at schools, uh, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. Uh, and because it runs off an SD card like you would find in a digital camera, it means that if you mess up the file system on it because you've created a program or a piece of software, um, it doesn't matter because you can just wipe that SD card and start all over again. Whereas if you were doing something perhaps with a more expensive laptop at home or a computer, um, you wouldn't want to wipe all your files off of that like your music or um, your photographs. So since I've joined the foundation, uh, we've launched a new website and we're also launching lots of materials. So we have a section on our website called Teach, Learn and Make. And what that means is I, as, along with two other teachers, we have created um, full schemes of work to teach with Raspberry Pi at Key Stage 2, 3, um, we're now looking at 4 and 5. These are cross-curricular, so primary school teachers can get their hands on them and use them. And we also have resources for the kind of informal learning, for, so for young people who just want to get started, want to learn something new, or maybe they want to make it into one of those cool projects that you saw in the video. Here's some examples of some of the ones we have. And I was explaining to someone earlier on as well that um, on the Raspberry Pi we have um, a version of Minecraft that you can hack. So what that means is, um, rather than just playing Minecraft, a lot of young people will know it takes ages to build a structure. Well, actually, with a few lines of code, you can just make that structure appear in Minecraft. And actually, if you want that house um, to be near you, so sometimes you might want to travel across the map, and the worlds in Minecraft can be quite large. It's really annoying that you've got to travel all the way back, so why not write a couple more lines of code and have that house follow you around? You can do that. The last thing that we've been doing and um, that we've started, this is actually our first cohort, is we've started a free um, teacher training program. We call it Pi Academy. It's kind of the, the, the name. We kind of nicknamed it around the office and now it's sort of stuck. It's the Raspberry Pi Academy for teachers. It's completely free. Any UK teacher can apply. We welcome you to Raspberry Pi in Cambridge and we will train you for two days. And um, actually one of the guys in the back row, his name is Alan Hurd, he is based in North Wales and the idea is that now he is a certified educator is that he will train others and I know he's already set up um, training academies in North Wales using Raspberry Pi. Also our resources are completely free and open source. So not only is our software open source but all of our, um, all of our resources are on GitHub. They are Creative Commons share alike. So that means you can take them, you can use them, you can remix them if you want to. And we also welcome contributions from our wider community. So like I spoke to GCHQ yesterday who are creating a Cypher resource. Um, I've spoken uh, to, to a few companies who are creating resources using Raspberry Pi that we can um, take uh, and put them on our website and get young people going that way. So if you um, want to come and speak to me, my Twitter handle is at Miss Philbin. Um, I'm not going to take part in the panel because I'm feeling really unwell and I need to go lie down now. I've been on Lemsips all day. Um, so please just um, get in contact with me or, or grab a card, I'd love to speak to you. Thank you.